You're about to watch a Trains Presents video. If you enjoy what you see, consider watching some of our other full-length videos. Hotspots, Horseshoe Curve, Tehachapi, Chicago Racetrack, and more. Locomotive, the video companion to our best-selling special issue. And a special collection from documentary producer Rich Luckin. All these and more are available from our website, KalmbachHobbyStore.com. I'm Bob LaPrell, President and CEO of the Museum of the American Railroad here in Frisco, and we are standing next to the 4018 Big Boy. And I'm Haley Enoch, I'm one of the correspondents from trains, and I usually do a lot of their writing about old steam locomotives, because I do have some uh, experience operating those. And Bob was kind enough to open the cab of the 4018 for us here, so we can kind of just look around and see some of the apparatus. The 4018, uh, from the records that we've seen, was retired about 1957. It was laid up good for the possibility of being reactivated. Uh, it was in Green River, Wyoming, but it was never reactivated. If, uh, if people see it for the first time, they are never underwhelmed. They're always overwhelmed at the sheer size and magnitude of this locomotive. 133 feet, a million two hundred thousand pounds. It's one of the largest land-based objects people will ever see. These were coal burning engines and they had an automatic stoker, so you didn't really uh, throw it in. Uh, there's an urban legend that somebody did hand bomb a big boy once when the stoker broke down, but uh, I have my doubts about that one. Uh, we acquired it in 1965. It was a gift of the Union Pacific Railroad back when they were donating some of the uh, 4,000 class engines to museums and municipalities. Uh, this particular one from the records that we have had gone through a major shopping uh, about 1956 and only had 26,000 miles on it before it was retired. So what you would do is this was the control, the stoker jet, if you know how an oil-fired locomotive works. This is more or less like the atomizer. It would uh, use some steam to throw the coal that was coming in on the stoker in. And then these, this V here, this would sort of fine-tune where the coal was going, so if they needed a little bit more on the right or left side, they could uh, adjust these, and uh, it still moves. It had major running gear repairs and boiler repairs. We have been down inside the boiler a few times, uh, and the flues are absolutely pristine in this boiler. They have just a light dusting of surface rust, no other deterioration whatsoever. Uh, the superheater is a little bit different story. They have some freeze damage. Um, but as some people may recall, there was an interest in reactivating this locomotive for a motion picture several years ago. And we had Gary Benzman and, and Scott Lindsay and Bernie Watts down here. And at the time, those three were really kind of the gurus of, of reviving steam. And I went down in the boiler with Gary and I was amazed at the condition of it. So uh, it's relatively dry down here in Texas. We don't get long, wet periods of rain. So this locomotive is in remarkably good condition. One thing that you notice about the Big Boy Cabs lot is that they had double um, water gauges here. And they did that because the boiler was so big, it was hard to have it long enough to see the exact water level without that glass cracking or a so that just helped give them an exact, more, uh, more of an exact idea of where it was. You can see in here, firebox, just no lights in there, but it's, a, it's 150 square feet, which is about the size of my living room. <laughs> you could park a car in there. Everything else is pretty much intact on this locomotive. We did remove some of the other rods for the move, um, just to cut down on any kind of issues in route. Um, and to make maintenance easier on it. We have all those parts in storage and we'll put them back on the locomotive once it's placed at its permanent um, uh, display track here at the museum. We're still under construction here. So a lot of the parts you see that are missing we actually have in storage. And your brakes, independent automatic, Johnson, Johnson bar here, throttle. Oh, look at that. That's fun. Uh, the total length of the locomotive is 133 feet, so actually we've walked over 100 feet back to this point. Uh, we're next to the tender. 
This is one of the famous centipede tenders that Union Pacific used on their large locomotives. And uh, you know, from the standpoint of moving this locomotive up here from Dallas, the tender was really the item of, of, of most concern because of the sheer number of wheels uh, on this and con some concern about you know radius and curvature uh, coming up here. Now the big boys fireboxes were so big that they had nine different great shakers on here, which is a bit more than your typical coal-fired locomotive. And uh, you can't see in here because this, uh, this firebox is so dark in here, but it was in a gridded pattern where it went three by three. And we were messing around in here a little bit and we found one that we can still move. So they would come up here and they would go. Whoop, shook it right off. Anyways, try that So they would just go like that. And what that would do is when they got a layer of ash or clinkers on the top, that would help to sort of just forcefully shake them down and then they would fall out the bottom of the fire and um, have more stuff in there that was actually burning. And we get asked many times, what's the future of this locomotive? You know, for the longest time, somebody wanted to see one run. Well, that's pretty much going to happen now. That's, that's imminent at this point. So what's ahead for 4018? Well, obviously, we will take very good care of it. Um, we'll continue to maintain it cosmetically um, and mechanically as well as far as just keep making sure it's going to roll easily to be moved around the museum. Um, in the next couple of, couple of years it will go under cover permanently when we build our uh, train shed. We're going to build a 100,000 square foot uh, train shed to cover our entire 60-piece uh, collection. Um, that will certainly protect it from any further deterioration from the elements. Um, it will actually go into a climate controlled part of our facility and be part of a very interactive um, operating um, exhibit as part of this museum, sights and sounds and so forth, since it is one of the superlatives in our collection. Well, we're proud to have this engine. It's a big part of UP's legacy, which we take a lot of pride in, very serious. Uh, we're looking forward to the 150th anniversary and being one of the venues where people can come and see other uh, 4,000 class engines. We'll do some special programming as part of that and uh, we're working with the local schools um, about um, putting on some great celebrations as part of that as well. It fits right into their curriculum.